other than ace jack, ace 10, ace 6, ace 7, pocket 6s or pocket 7s. Okay, yes, he has jacks, he also has pocket 10s. We can fold this. <laughs> Hello everyone, so welcome to a session where we are going to be playing against the solver solution. So we are going to be using a pretty obnoxiously large game tree and it's uh, the bet sizes are going to be adjusted to 100 NL. For bet sizes, we have quarter pot, we have 50% pot, we have full pot, and we have one and a half times the pot, so 150% of the pot. Um, we're going to be using the 184 flop subset from Pio. And additionally, what's cool is that the plain explain feature is able to really cycle through the entire uh, flop database. Many times you're going to hear me slowing down and thinking very deeply about things that would otherwise seem completely trivial. I think the whole point of this is this is really an opportunity to slow down and uh, really think deeply even on every single small decision. And I think that in the end, that's how you can get the most out of this feature from the software. So let's start out by practicing in the big blind. Um, so we will check and the unbegun bets, a quarter pot on this flop. So we could maybe raise this some of the time, but I think I would fold. I could be wrong, but I think I'll fold. And I was right. Okay, so I will check. And on this flop, I think a check raise is pretty reasonable. So I'll check raise like 50% of the pot. Okay. Now when the ace comes, I think we can check because that does put some strong hands in his range. It also allows us to bet the river and our equity isn't very threatened. So it goes check, check. Now I think that gives us a reasonable bet on the river. And I think his, his range is mostly top pair heavy. So I think a half pot bet size would work pretty well. Oh wow, we need full pot. Funny how the EV is technically the same. So that means that the difference in EV is pretty small. Funny. Anyways, okay, so we bet he raises. Hmm. I think it's a call. I think it's just a call. So we fought trips, so it's check, check. Um, on this flop, I don't think he's hit much of anything. So I think in these scenarios, it's pretty reasonable to bet quarter pot since there's a lot of air in his range. So it goes call, so it's probably pretty ace-king heavy. I think a half pot or a quarter pot bet would work again here. I'll bet quarter pot. It turns out to be a good move. So I will check. He bets quarter pot. So I think this is a pretty straightforward call on this board. Putting pocket sixes into our checking range really beefs up our, our checking range since most of the other hands we check with are, are relatively weak here. Okay, so it goes check, check again. And pretty unlikely that he has a flush. It went check, call, check, check. So I think a small bet size or a check raise could do well here. But check raise I don't think makes as much sense because I don't think that he's betting this river very often. So I think a small bet size works best. Okay. Yeah, so I think this is definitely a hand that we can pretty comfortably fold. We have so many hands to raise with. We have so many good hands to call with. Pocket fives on jack 10, six. So bets and... So there's some argument for raising here. Um, on one hand, there are a lot of cards that could come up that would make it harder for us to call, but I also think that we have better hands to raise with. I am i wouldn't be surprised if there's a mixed strategy, but I do think this works better as a call, but whatever. So I, I think it's a check. I think we can actually still comfortably call here. Um, other than ace-jack, ace-ten, ace-six, ace-seven, pocket sixes are relatively unlikely. Pocket sevens are relatively unlikely. 
Okay, yes, he has jacks, um, pocket jacks. He also has pocket tens. Okay, wait, never mind. He has a really fucking strong range here. Um, so I think we can fold this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so sometimes when you talk through it, uh, you come to a completely different conclusion than what your first instinct would have been. Okay, so we check, he bets. We have um, ace-jack offsuit, which we could defend. That's much better than this. We have ace eight suited uh we also have ace four suited in this case to defend with um pretty much any of our ace combos with diamonds clubs or spades we could raise or defend with this is a fold okay so queen seven deuce sounds like a flop that he wouldn't bet very often and now we make top pair. So how has the jack changed ranges here? Um, we do not have a lot of the strongest jack combos in our range. I'm actually pretty surprised that we do have queen jack suited, queen jack suited, jack 10, 10, nine. So we have some pretty good hands that connect with this board. And he has queen jack, jack 10 suited, 10, nine, king jack and ace jack. So. In this spot, I do think that our range is dominated, and I think that this does play well as a check or a quarter pot bet. But I think a check is good because now he does have some ability to rep some good hands. Additionally, he'll have, um, he has draws. So like ace-king is a, is a draw here. So I think check works well. Um, now I think we have a, a reasonable spot to bet here. I don't think betting large would make sense because I don't think he has a value dense range. So I think betting half pot would be a pretty good size. And I was totally wrong. Um, we should actually be over betting here. Okay, so when he checks, what does he have? What does he check with? Pocket queens, some good pocket pairs, um, some kind of medium strength pocket pairs. What top pair, he has ace jack. Queen Jack, he also has Ace Jack offsuit, to be fair. Um, that's interesting. I would not have guessed that overbetting was the right move, but you live and you learn. Okay, check, check. Um, Okay, we face a quarter pot bet. Um, I think we can throw this away. A seven, so we can check. Goes check, check. I think we can continue checking. Doesn't put too many strong hands in our range. Um, I think we have so many better ace hands to ace x hands to call with. We have a lot of better hands to call with. So pretty clear fold. Um, king queen. So I think we can check raise this some of the time. Um, I think it works better as a check raise than it does as a call. Uh, so I'd raise 50% of the pot. And then the ace comes. Does the ace put stronger hands in our range? I don't think so. So I think a check raise check line works best. Um, and now this is the point where we either have to like raise big or fold. I think it makes more sense to fold. Okay, so let's check. Goes check, check. Um, I think continuing to check makes sense to keep his range wide. And I think checking to, yeah, so went check, check. Okay, so now we'll check. Facing a quarter pot bet. Um, I think we can raise with this sometimes and fold with this sometimes. I will fold. Okay. We can check, bet. I think this is a pretty good spot to raise. Trying to figure out whether a large raise size works or a small uh, raise size works. So I'll raise large. 75 suited. Can we raise with this? What other. What better bluffs do we have? Six five suited would work best. But a five and a seven, 
I think is also reasonable with two clubs makes a pretty good bluff relative to the other hands in our range. I would raise slightly smaller. And the reason, so by the way, the reason why I chose to raise smaller was because the jack on the turn gives him a notable amount of stronger hands. So if you raise very large, you then put yourself in a pretty bad spot where you actually get pot odds to call with a lot of hands that you would rather not call with. Um, and now after the raise, when the king comes, that puts a ton of strong hands in his range. So we have to just check fold. So we have a pretty strong draw here and we have two diamonds for runner runner flush. So I think a check raise, a large check raise would work well here. And then if we check and it goes check bet. Um, yeah, so, so in this scenario, I think, I believe it's a fold. I can't see us wanting to defend with that hand. Okay, so top pair, top kicker with two spades. So he will have a number of draws. He will have queen jack. He will have middle pairs like king nine. He will have ace nine, um, queen 10, jack 10. So, I think some, some pretty value heavy hands, and I think that does give us a good spot to check raise. Okay, it goes check check, and I think a half pot bet size works pretty well here. Okay, so seven six. Um, yeah, I don't see that much of a reason to defend here. Um, okay, so facing a bet, I think a small raise would work. No, we have to raise large, but we have to raise anyhow. Huh. Quarter pot bet works well here. The nine of diamonds doesn't change a whole lot. Um, doesn't put that many flush draws into his range. Ace nine in the big blind. We check, bet. Um, so I think that we can raise here. I'll raise half pot. So with the five, I think we can actually begin to lead out I would lead out for half pot. All right, so top pair. Check call. Pretty reasonable to still call another street. So what better hands do we have to call with? So I think on the flop, there's a chance that we could have folded jack 10. So we might not have jack 10 suited in this spot, which means we don't have the nuts. We do have pocket nines. We also have pocket eights. We get here with pocket eights. Unsure if we get here with pocket sevens. We get here with ace nine. We also, we also, let's see. We also get here with king nine. And we also get here with queen nine. But should we call with jack nine? And I think we also have 10 nine suited but I think that jack nine is a little bit too close to the bottom of our range to call with. So I think pocket sixes is a pretty straightforward call. The deuce on the turn doesn't really change a whole lot. This over bet, um, takes advantage of the fact that we have a lot of medium strength hands here. So 
we have to kind of think about what what is the distribution of our different medium strength hands. So we have stuff like jack 10 suited, we have stuff like 8-7 suited, we have 8-6 suited, 4-5 suited. So I think in this spot we would fold pocket threes. Um, should we fold pocket sixes? I don't think we'd fold pocket sevens. What value hands would he be overbetting with? Something like ace jack suited. Um, something like ace five suited or even ace three suited for his bluffs or something like pocket eights. So I, it, it's kind of on the edge for me, but I think I'd fold this. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we can call a bet size that large on this run out. So it checks all the way down and yeah, I think a call was pretty standard there. Goes check, check. Check, check again. Now we have a good hand that we can comfortably call with. Yeah, so I think we can call or raise this. Um, and I elect to raise. So we can check, pretty standard. Okay, so I think that this is the kind of hand that would make a pretty reasonable bluff doesn't have a lot of showdown value. It's one of the weaker hands that we get to this point with. Now, what I am not sure about is whether we should lead out with this hand or we should try to check raise with it to use it as a river bluff raise. And I think I'll elect to lead and we'll see what the right decision is. That was the right decision. All right, so if you made it to the end of this video, you're an absolute champion. Thank you so much for watching. I definitely had to edit out a lot of really long pauses in between my explanations. It's definitely not very easy to play and uh, talk about your thought process as you play. Definitely gives me a whole lot of respect for people who were able to like stream on Twitch and were able to uh, talk really quickly as they play. I think, <laughs> I mean, mad respect to those people. Anyways, let me know if you guys wanna see more content like this. Um, it's pretty easy for me to create. It takes much less effort than the other videos that have a lot more rigorous analysis. Um, and it was pretty fun, but I, I definitely can't anticipate whether you guys are going to find it entertaining or boring. Anyways, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and thanks for watching.